Hi, dear students, you are welcome back to Edubay Global Solution. What I'll be teaching you today is chapter 1.2, the main component of a computer system. Central processing unit, we call it CPU. There are a few things you need to know as far as CPU is concerned. The CPU is the main, is the brain of a computer. CPU controls all the functions in computer system. It means that if there is no CPU in your computer, then there is no computer. Then we do have two brands of CPU. Of course, the main famous brand of CPU, Intel and AMD. Now, this is how CPU looks like, the picture you can see here. So we have select three logical units of a CPU in the options below. Control unit is one of the three logical units of a CPU, then arithmetic and logical units, then the main storage. These are the three, uh, uh, these are the three main logical units of a CPU. So if you see any question like that, then you should know these are the three. Now, next one, let's quickly talk about two different types of memory. We do have RAM and we have ROM. So main memory is either RAM and ROM. We've already talked about that at length in the previous chapter. Now, another thing you're supposed to know here is the secondary storage. Secondary storage are any storage we use to store our data externally, which are actually movable from our computer. We do have a lot of examples of external storage. So don't forget anything other than RAM and ROM, we call them secondary storage. Now, I have one simple activity for you here. Let's look at arrange the following secondary storage hierarchically. So let's say we have secondary memory here, or you call it secondary storage. Okay. Then after that, we do have two different types of secondary storage. Some of them are fixed, which means they are inside the computer, while some of them are removable. So example of the fixed, the one that is inside your CPU, if you have a computer and you open it. So the secondary storage you will found inside it are hard disk, then you will found CD or DVD disk inside as well. But those that are removable, of course, we have an example of CD, which is the Blu-ray, then we have another one as pen drive. So don't forget about this hierarchy. Cambridge might give you questions similar to this. Now, let's quickly talk about main memory. As far as main memory is concerned, there is something we call, if you store any program in your computer, let's say Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, any program you store in your computer, whenever it is needed, RAM will fetch data from your computer, and the data that are fetched from RAM, it will be transferred to cache memory, then cache memory always talk to CPU. So let's, let me start the process from here. Whenever, you, let's say you need a program, Internet Explorer, then when you click the processor, central processing unit, it will go to cache to fetch the data. If this data is not in the cache, then cache will request from the RAM. If it's not in the RAM, then RAM will actually request from the hard disk. So CPU talks to Catch, catch also touch, uh, talks to RAM, then RAM also talks to hard drive. So it's not possible for CPU to fetch data directly from hard drive. No, CPU actually fetch data from catch memory, catch also fetch data from RAM, and RAM also fetch data from hard disk. That's how it works. Now, if you do understand that, which of the following are correct about cache memory? Cache memory, we can say that it holds commonly used data in our computer. All the data that we often use, they are always stored in the cache. Because of that, when you click on any program you always use on your computer, you will see that it will load faster, it will open faster. Why? Because that data is actually in the cache memory and CPU can easily talk 
to cache memory. It can actually fetch data from cache memory. Cache is the fastest type of memory, this is correct. Then cache memory is located between processor and the RAM, this is correct. These are the three informations that are correct about cache memory. Now, let's continue. So in that case, let's quickly talk about, you know, I was still talking about the cache memory. So this is how it works. CPU, we actually speak with cache to fetch a data. If this data is not available in the cache, then it will be fetched from RAM. But immediately it is fetched from RAM, then it will be sent to cache memory. So that next time, whenever CPU actually need the data, then it will fetch it from cache instead of fetching it from RAM. So now, RAM stands for, of course, you know that, random access memory. Now, another thing, RAM is a part of a computer which temporary, which temporarily stores instruction. RAM is the, RAM is volatile. You know, we explain about the meaning of volatile, which means that when the computer is turned off, all data is lost. All the data will be lost. It stores instructions currently running in the computer. If, any, if anybody asks you what is RAM, these are the things you need to say as far as RAM is concerned. Now, another thing you need to know here is ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. ROM is a built-in memory that cannot be changed. It is read-only. It normally holds the um, boot-up instruction so to start the computer. Then it is non-volatile, just the opposite of RAM, which means that data is not lost when computer is turned off. So you need to take note of all these important points about RAM and ROM. And finally, um, let's look at the summary of what we just discussed today. Backing storage is also known as secondary storage. This is correct. Another question. Backing storage is non-volatile. Yes, backing storage, they are non-volatile. Another thing. Volatile means data is lost when computer is turned off. Yeah, this is correct. And another one, backing storage is used to store data temporarily like RAM. No. Backing storage is used to store data for a long time. Yeah, this is correct. And finally, data cannot be copied from backing storage. No, you can copy data. Just like you put something on pen drive or on your CD. Yeah, you can copy it anytime you need it. User tends to make copies of original files on backing storage. This is correct. These are the five things. All right, this is just a very short chapter. And in our next video, we are going to continue to chapter 1.3. If you want to have access to this interactive content, don't forget to go to our website, www.edubi.com to have access to it. Try to support us. Thank you. Bye.